Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna talk about corporate careers versus the entrepreneurial track and how your side gig can become your next main gig. So to start, I'd like to introduce you to today's guest. She's had an incredible career and has recently left a high-powered corporate role to start a strategic consulting business. Please welcome Margaret Zanell. Thank you, Christine. Thanks so much for being it's here with me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and yeah. you know, I'm such a big fan, Margaret. You, oh. You've got a great career and you're Thank also you. um, a great mentor to me. So lots of oh. words of wisdom that you can um, share today. So I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> to start it off, okay. how about just your career journey? Because I know you flip back yeah. and forth between corporate and entrepreneurial. Yeah, efforts, so. so I like to um, talk about my career in stages. So mm -hmm. it started off in corporate, uh, in tech. Yep. Then I went into entrepreneurial startups in the Bay Area and in Canada. Then I went back to corporate, and then most recently I've left corporate to start my own consulting business, so you'd call that sort of more entrepreneurial uh, in nature. Uh, it's largely been around strategy, marketing, and business transformation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, you know, mainly in tech, most recently in cannabis, so it's a little bit uh, interesting uh, these days. And then ultimately, it's all about revenue growth. It's, you know, so it's all about driving revenue growth, driving go-to-market market, market strategy. So now, you asked about, you know, flipping out of corporate into entrepreneurialism. I um, launched my own business, mm -hmm. uh, Zanel Advisory. Uh, and, you know, my main role is to help senior leaders drive revenue and secure capital um, to invest back into their business. And I do that by providing um, fractional CSO, so mm -hmm. Chief Strategy Officer and CMO, yep. Yep. Uh, to organizations all around you know, go-to-market, business expansion, market expansion, capability, and offering. Um, so now I'm taking that corporate learning and applying it to SMB uh, in organizations where they may not have the resources to spend um, for a, you know, a, a uh, full-time role, but they can benefit from my experience in a fractional way. Yeah, so and, that's and really my side gig. That's my new side gig. Um, and, and it's a big role, <laughs> big and, and that was a big, yeah. I feel, I don't yeah. know about you, but I feel yeah. like that was a really big step. You know, you had a really great job, yeah. and yeah. to leave, and you you went cold. I you did. Didn't, you weren't working I on did. it, you know, as a yeah. side gig off the side of your no. desk trying to build your business. You just jumped right in I did. and started to be an entrepreneur. How was that for you? It and how was, did you figure out what to do, actually? Well, you know, it was, uh, I got to the point uh, when you're in your second tour of duty in corporate, you get to a point, I was a, a decade in, and I thought, you know, I, it's time to take ownership of my career mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. make a change. I was yep. ready. I yep. was absolutely ready. Um, but it was scary because it's like, okay, what am I, you know, how am I going to decide what I'm going to do and yep. how am I going to make money from it? Yep. And, you know, the formula for me is pretty simple. It's like, what are you, what are you good at? Mm -hmm. Right? So <laughs> what are you good at? Yeah. trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, exactly. What, what, are you, what are you good, good at? at? What do you love? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we spend so much time at work, you know, amongst, yeah. you know, all this. So you so better do something that you yeah. love, right? Taking inventory of what yeah. you enjoy. And what yeah. you enjoy, what your skills and capabilities are. But more, you know, probably most importantly, what's the business need that you can potentially fulfill and monetize? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, you know, you're going from one place to the next and you have, you know, I have a family, I have an income to earn, and how am I going to turn that knowledge and expertise into dollars? So for me, you know, it's a little different than some people who start, you know, an entrepreneurial career in a, you know, I've built an app or I've done, you know, I, I'm building a restaurant or whatever. For yep, me, yep. it's like I've had my majority of my career was in corporate. So I know that there are things that I can do from a strategic standpoint that I can apply to SMB. Um, I just have to find the right opportunities. Yeah, and knowing yeah. what to charge I think is really difficult too because mm. you you need to make it financially viable yes, you do. in order to survive. Yeah. I think, um, I don't know if this is just for women, I'm going to say it's for women, but yeah. we have a hard time maybe knowing how to value something or knowing right. the value of ourselves because we're so humble. Yes. Um, yes like, to enough. figure that out of, of how much to charge and how you know, do know your worth and like yeah. do you have any tips on on how women can approach that when well, certainly it's important to know the marketplace, right? Yep. So, you know, there's a couple of equations. You can do it backwards in or outwards in. I've or got that metaphor. Yeah. Met, market, <laughs> market in or, or, or value out. You know, I took what I earned in a corporate environment yep. and kind of deconstructed it into a per diem and a, and a, and a, and a 
you know, an hourly rate. Yep. And then I, you know, went out, particularly for consulting, I went out to friends and individuals who were either independents or already in corporate consulting in Deloitte's mm -hmm. and said, kind of roughly write, what does an independent get either, like I didn't even know the business model. Is yep. it an hourly? Is it a per diem? Is it, you know, project based? So I got a lot of competitive information. Yep. And then I kind of went, okay, what's, you know, I built spreadsheets and I'm like, okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> well, course, if I get that rate, of, yeah. I'm going to make, you know, a fortune. And if I get this rate, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. Yep. So I kind of tried to figure out where, <laughs> you know, where that spot is. Yep. And, you know, used it as um, a benchmark. You know, first you have the, you know, once you're getting into these opportunities, mm -hmm. you kind of have to establish your value. And then, all, you know, in, in terms of what you can do for the client. Yep. And then the, you know, the fee structure kind of comes behind it. And you build over time, I'm sure. Yeah, you totally do. So and we do tend to kind of undervalue sometimes. I know, it's a terrible habit. So it's important to, like, know, own it and be comfortable in saying what you think you're worth. And how did you get your first client? Well, you are a big proponent of LinkedIn. I know yes, that. Yes. And I used it as a tool. Like, I mean, I did some oh, quite neat. a bit of yep. networking. Yep. But I was, um, because I was in tech in the Bay Area in, in earlier mm -hmm. in my career, mm -hmm. um, this whole new cannabis industry was very exciting to me. It was, had many similarities in terms of a nascent industry, you know, uh, growth uh, out of control. Yes. Um, and opportunity abound. And I thought, you know what, how do I parlay what I've done in tech in to cannabis so I just started I, I looked in LinkedIn and went who do I know that's in this industry I probably had six or seven discussions with mm -hmm. you know friends who've gone into it or knew someone and ended up having a, a you know a critical coffee conversation with uh, an individual I had past you know ties with in mm -hmm. the past and we got into a business discussion. I said, well, hey, what are you looking for? What do you need? How can I help you? And it turned into my first consulting gig. That's which, awesome. And it's still, and I'm still doing it. So, so coffee, LinkedIn, coffee, just getting out LinkedIn, there, networking. LinkedIn, and yeah, network. And you talk a lot about your tech background. Yes. Do you think that's kind of given you, because in the tech industry, you know, it's like the fail fast or take risk. Do you yes. think that's sort of helped you become yeah. an entrepreneur because you've sort of been trained in that environment where it's okay and it makes you more pro-risk maybe doing that? Well, I, I would say that, um, you know, there are tech companies that aren't, uh, you know, that are can be more conservative and there's ones that can be incredibly um, um, entrepreneurial yep. and progressive. I was always in areas of entrepreneurialism. So we were always in initiatives that were mm -hmm. new. So I kind of had that DNA. Yep. I, I don't think tech matters. I, honestly, like if you want to go, you know, from corporate into entrepreneurialism, you can do it whether you're in consumer packaged goods, whether you're in tech, whether you're in telco. Y you, I think it's more innate. Do you have um, a risk appetite? Right. And are you, you know, do you have enough confidence in your abilities to say, you know what, I'm going to give this a shot and right. see what I can do with it. So what has been yeah. maybe one of, not, I don't know if it's your biggest or your best uh, learning pieces to date? Um, a couple like big ones. Mm -hmm. you know, I we got about a minute I, like, too, I, Okay, a couple yeah. of big ones. One is um, you have to be super organized when you have multiple clients. Yep. New concept because you know usually steady full time work, same thing over and over again. You have two clients, three clients, different cultures. You got to be very very specific in your abilities to focus your work mm -hmm. and always build your pipeline. So you're always do as much in terms of you know, working on your business as you are working in your business. That is one of the biggest learnings. That, so that's a really work good tip. in your business, yeah. but always be working on your business. That's a great tip. Okay. Thanks okay. so much, Margaret. And we'll be right back. So join Thank us you. Uh, for a, a panel conversation shortly. Hi, I'm Laura Babcock, host of The O Show here on Cable 14. And during this pandemic, while we're all staying home, staying safe and practicing social distancing, we're still gonna talk to the Hamiltonians who are making news. We'll keep having those same great discussions on important topics that matter to you. The only difference is the platform that we're shooting it on. So please stay tuned, stay engaged. COVID-19 is a serious public health threat. All Canadians must act now to reduce the spread. Avoid crowded places and practice social distancing. Avoid non-essential travel and stay home as much as possible. Self-isolate if you may have been exposed to COVID-19. Stay connected with neighbours, friends and family. When you take care of yourself, you take care of others. A message from the Government of Canada.
let your kids know, in some cases, what they do with their phones could be more than just wrong. It could be illegal. Learn more online. A message from the Government of Canada. Emergency alerts of life-threatening events help keep us safe. That's why governments and broadcasters have come together to bring more alerts to more Canadians faster. Introducing Alert Ready, Canada's new emergency alert system. When an alert is broadcast, it's time to act. Learn more at alertready.ca. Hi everyone, welcome back. We're joined by two more professionals. We have Lisa Dahlia, the owner of Soleil Shoes Unlocked, and Marofi Tong, a lifelong entrepreneur and freelance strategic management consultant. Thank you both ladies for joining us here. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Uh, Lisa, let's start with you. Give us a brief background of, of your journey. Really briefly, really quickly, um, Right before I started my business, which we are now in our 10th year, so Lee Shoes Congrats. on Lock Street, yeah. thank you so much. Um, I was working in the luxury industry, so mm -hmm. I worked for Louis Vuitton and then Chanel. Mm -hmm. um, I approached my boss and I told her that I was going to be leaving to start my own business. And that's what happened. Wow, that must have been a really, like big moment and very risky how, how were you feeling about was it did uh, you just jump right into or were you working on this on well i was afraid that it was going to be a conflict of interest yeah so okay. during um about the last six months of my time at chanel i was doing a lot of my business planning and researching and trying to find money to do this yes, and yes. what I was going to sell. Where did you find it? Any tips? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah, I dug really That's deep right. in the backyard. Yeah. So. Did you apply for any funding? Or? Uh, I did. I, yep. had a, I, I did apply for a grant that I, I didn't get. Mm -hmm. um, there's some grants on online that you really have to be careful for. A lot of them are schemes and oh. I think that I kind of fell into that. Yep. It did get me to actually complete a really in-depth business plan. Yes, right, so right. for that, I was able to present it to CIBC, and um, I, that's where I got my, my line of credit to start my business. Nice, amazing, mm -hmm. nice. So, and congrats, 10 Thank years, that's, that's amazing. And I'm yes. sure that was very challenging to jump into. So like, how did, how did you initiate that? Because uh, like, it's a brick and mortar store. Did, did you jump right into that? I did jump right into it. I um, started, I got my first taste of entrepreneurial um, business and, and the whole industry working for a boutique in Hamilton um, called Morella's Ladies mm -hmm. Boutique mm -hmm. when I was in high school. So I was 16 and I really got that flavor of sales and customers and working with customers and buying and um, advertising. So it was a little bit of everything and I really enjoyed the day-to-day -day randomness. So you never really know what was going to happen. And so I knew at that point that one day I would own a shoe store. From mm -hmm. there... I just continue. I went on to school for business purchasing. I worked for Winner's Head Office as a buyer's assistant mm -hmm. in the footwear department. I did a fashion internship in uh, Milan in the fashion industry and, and so on and so forth. And, and that's how I ended up here. That's yeah. amazing. Maroka, over to you. You've got a bit of a different journey. You're a bit of a... <laughs> Serial freelancer, entrepreneur? What do yeah, you, yeah, I think so. I mean, so I spent 10 years as a professional actor and a producer. Um, I guess living the dream, I decided as an Asian person to not be an engineer as my parents wanted me to be. <laughs> and, <laughs> and when they looked at them in the eye and said, I'm not going to school for engineering, I'm going to go to school for theater um, and become an actor. So I chased that for 10 years. And during that time, I... Um, started a theater festival in Kitchener-Waterloo, which is my hometown, and ran it for six years. And so, you know, I was in that gig economy. I was constantly working mm -hmm. for myself, um, mm -hmm. working from, uh, go going from project to project. And in 2013, life happened. I had two serious injuries happen to me, and I had to really take a look at myself and what I wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to school and got my MBA, um, wh and wh doing yep. that uh, part-time. So yep. I was still working full-time as an actor, as a producer. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, it's a few years ago, I just had this shift. I, was, I think I was burning okay. out in that industry. We all know the entertainment industry is incredibly volatile yep. and, and can get very draining emotionally. And I just made a decision to change. So I kind of bounced around for a little while, tried to enter the corporate nine to five kind of scheme yep. of a job. And then um, just through circumstances, through networking, ended up where I am now. So I'm a freelance strategic management consultant. And so 
that is sort of my project. It is more stable. Um, even though I'm freelance, it's still actually more stable than my life in the entertainment industry. And I haven't let that go completely. So I guess I, in some ways, still have my side gigs. Uh, my side gig now officially is acting, and I'm working on a music album. Very wow. interesting. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so each of you are, you know, primarily your, your financial source is your businesses. How does that pressure, you know, because, you know, you're relying on yourself to mm -hmm. provide yeah. for yourself. How do you deal with that pressure? I cry. <laughs> I, I let it account. out. A glass yeah. of wine every day. Because yeah, it's every hard, day. right? Yeah, it's really it is a lot of pressure. Yeah. It really is. You can't really have a sick day or a checkout day or like, I'm just going to have can. an easy day today. Like, yeah. you got to. Yeah, you you know what? Yeah. On the contrary, yeah. I really listen to myself when I need a sick day or yeah. when yeah. I need to I just agree. stay That's home. Great. Yeah. I really do that because I find that I'm just not productive or, and you, you know, want to burn out. And I don't want to burn out. I'm not, you know, it's, you, you can tend to get a little bit snappier yeah. when yeah. you have other things kind of playing on your mind. So you I really yourself. do, I've, uh, that is one thing that I would recommend to any woman, mm -hmm. especially, especially women, you will be so much better off by giving yourself a day or two days or a couple hours just to like check back in. Yeah. I do think it's important to establish your like your financial goals. Though. Mm -hmm. You know, back to your you know a yeah. little bit of your question, which is sort of what do I? It, it perhaps it's a you know it can be a different perspective. It's it's kind of like what do I minimum need? Yeah. You know, either for my family, myself, or you know for the for the pleasures that I wish to have. Yeah. And then you know you you know from that point on you know how 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 much do I have to start to you know garner in terms of a pipeline so that you know I feel like there can be some stability moving forward and yep. a little bit to Maroki's Mer point um, there's different business models like you can own your own business and, and, and you have to establish a model that allow you to pay yourself and your employees etc you can work for yourself and then you got to kind of figure you know figure out how to create potentially an annuity stream so you know is it project based you know are you getting multiple gigs from the same place like mm -hmm. you kind of have to look at the business model as well as what your financial requirements are yeah right? I'm very rigorous yeah. with my yeah. finances and I yeah. think I'm very very fortunate in that I was taught how to be financially yes. responsible yes. from a very very young age right. you know from the day my family first gave me an allowance I had to really be very very meticulous so I work backwards I set out yeah. goals for myself and then yeah. I work backwards similar to what you were approach. talking about yeah. and yeah. annuity yeah. I yeah. really think well it, what's my dream salary what do yeah. I want so what kind of projects and how many clients do I need to exactly. secure in order to right. accomplish that goal in some ways, I, I think it's not too different, though, than someone who works a nine-to-five mm -hmm. job. If they have a goal, if they have a, they have a home they want to buy someday, if they want to go on vacation, mm -hmm. they set those goals for themselves, yeah, and they have to do that. And I think even though perhaps, you know, we are our work, and mm -hmm. if we're not available, there is instability. If we can't secure a client, that instability exists in the workplace, too. Oh. A person could go in tomorrow and lose their job, mm -hmm. and I think people think yeah. about that regularly. They think, do I have a job five years from now? If their company is in trouble, they start feeling, yeah. that concern so it exists it's there's a lot of similarities I think yeah. just how we fra frame it the perspective we yeah. create for it and something we talked about mm -hmm. earlier was you know when you work in a corporate role you have like a pension yeah. or some yeah. sort of benefits yeah. package yeah. Yeah. Um, which you know yeah I think is great I'm in corporate. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I like that that works yeah. really well for me but but so what, what do you guys how do you navigate that investing yeah. wisely yeah yeah so just adding that into yeah. your model and what about benefits Get health, get health coverage. I mean, I, 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 many of you are younger, but you know, we have. I have family. I've, you know, I've, uh, and and as you age, you, you know, your health becomes so critical. Uh, it, it's critical regardless. Yeah. But um, that was one of the first things I did as soon as I decided to go from entrepreneurialism to, or pardon me, from uh, corporate out, uh, secure benefits, mm -hmm. um, a health care package, as well as. Um, incorporate like I did at the incorporation because I wanted to create an entity and you yep. know kind of have as, as Lisa asset. said you know have have a foundation so that you can invest back mm -hmm. um, I don't know did you know do you guys agree or ladies agree uh, is health benefits important well or? I had I yeah. think you know we had yeah. a bit of a conversation about this yeah. um, before and it's it's really gotten yeah. my wheels spinning yeah. a little bit because yeah. uh, admittedly I am young and I am yeah. a, I'm a risk taker <laughs> and therefore I yeah. also think I'm a little bit invincible but I think 
about when I talked about in 2013 mm -hmm. when I had my injury, I was out mm -hmm. and as, a, as an actor, as a freelance actor who was not unionized, I had mm -hmm. no protection at all. Yeah. So I actually drained my savings for two years yeah. to take care yeah. of my health because of course as a performer, if right. my body's not working, I have no work. Yeah. So I, I went and really invested in that, mm -hmm. but that also woke me up to the, right. the you know, my vulnerability mm -hmm. as a human being, first of all, like despite my age, that, yeah. that something could happen to me and, and completely change my career and yeah. change my life. Mm -hmm. And second of all, that, that led, I have to be more considerate about things like benefits. So um, I was very fortunate during my MBA to have a student insurance package. And of yes. course, I'm, I'm fresh out of my MBA only a few years and I only made this change to go yeah. back into freelance recently. And now this conversation's kind of made you <laughs> <laughs> And very, I'll just much ask you it. just for yeah. those uh, watching. So, yeah. how much is a benefits package? Like, what's what's kind of like? Oh, jeez. Ballpark. I mean, just yeah, throw it, it can, there out it there can real anywhere from like a, 120 to 200 bucks a month. So like, it's not a significant yeah. investment. Formula. Yeah, and, I think and that's then, so important. Your health yeah. is so important. So, so and you can write good. these yeah. things off, right? Like, if you're incorporated, you can write certain not, you know certain expenses off. Yep. Your health benefits you can apply against your business. So. So we got yeah. a couple minutes left. Let's jump into maybe some realities of being an entrepreneur. Anything you guys want to share or things you weren't expecting to face or some great outcomes maybe that have come out of um, owning your own business? For me, one of the, the greatest outcomes that, I mean, I sort of planned my business around it, but mm -hmm. um, being able to travel oh. and sort of pick up and go. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs might look at me and say, you're crazy, like why would you you can't leave, you need to be at work right. or, or whatever. And I think that's why I'm doing this so that I don't have to live within two weeks of vacation time a year. So yep. for me, that's that was great. a huge, huge um, life style that I really wanted to incorporate yeah. into my business and into to my life. And it's great yeah. to know it and yeah. then you can apply it. Mm -hmm. What about you, Margaret? Um, I wanted to spend more time with my kids. Mm -hmm. I, two things, more time with my kids and, and having you know, multiple clients and being able to do more work from home in some yep. cases and kind of own my own time. Yep. That was a big one. And the other thing um, for those who are in corporate, you can earn as much money, if not more, and you structure it right, you can you can uh, work less because of the tax mm -hmm. structure. Because of the tax structure. Yeah. So there's Get some right great and, yeah. benefit to it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's worth thinking about. Um it furthers my plans in taking over the world. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, but I, I think too it, it really um, reaffirms to me because you know like I said I've moved into a nine to five or a very brief period, yeah. but it reaffirmed to me that it was that flexibility of a schedule works and, and it adheres to the idea that not all of us as people operate in that nine to five. Mm -hmm. we, right. Not all of us are maybe at our best during that period of time. I'm a bit of a night owl. Yeah. I like a break in the middle of the yeah. day. I think yeah. I do my best work when I do some work in the morning, get my workout in, um, run some errands, and then work more at night. Right. And more uh, of a work-life balance. Yeah, more of a work-life balance, and I think in a way that makes me bring out the best of myself and For do sure. the best yeah. work I can. Work-life integration. Maybe yes. I'll call it. Okay, like we it. got like 30 seconds oh left, so really, really quick, super punchy. <laughs> Any advice for women wanting to be an entrepreneur either full-time or off the side of their desk? Quick words of wisdom. What, what do you think? Just do it. Just, Just do, do it. it. All right. I'm with you. Just do it. Take the risk. Just it's do worth it. it. And absolutely love yeah. what you're doing or else yes. it's going to feel like work. There you go. Mm. Good one. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, ladies, thank for being Christine. here. Thank you. And, and I'll also thank say you're you. all incredible. You've got really, really awesome yeah. um, career journeys. So please, for those of you watching, look up these three women um, and, and check out their stories, check out their companies. Um, and to follow Maroka, yeah, get out there. Just do it. Anyway, awesome. thanks so much thank for being you. here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, ladies. I think that was cool. Oh, okay. <laughs>